All right, get your Bibles in your hand. Let's make this proclamation. Praise God. Let's proclaim something. Let's tell hell, dark circumstances, situations, and conditions. Let's let them know what we're standing on. And we're not going to change our mind about it. If you'll just rise to your feet just for a couple of seconds, and we're going to say this, and we're going to dive into this word. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Get your Bibles in your hand. However you got it, smartphone, tablet, print it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say this with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says that I can do. It is the definer of my design, the presenter of my purpose, and the director of my destiny. It is a source of the creative faith that is necessary for me to accomplish the success I have been ordained to realize. It is the voice of God speaking to my spirit, commanding my soul, and controlling my body for a kingdom lifestyle and world dominion. It turns the problems of my life into doors of opportunity where increase, advancement, and success wait for me on the other side. I will make it my highest priority to be present and on time when the Lord has summoned me to come and hear my grace give, present character transforming truths that challenge me to rise to excellence, deny mediocrity, and embrace the changes that guarantee my prosperity through faith because I know that it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, Lord, you've heard the tenor of our words encased in this profession. And I know, I believe with everything that's within me that you're going to show us what we need to see about your person, your presence, your power, your kingdom, and our purpose in it. You will reveal to us what is relevant, teach us what's true, seal it with simplicity, help me say it successfully, and bring security to every believer that will hear and obey it. Because the Spirit of the Lord God Almighty is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal broken hearts, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and yes, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. You may be seated in his presence. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, hey, I got on shoes today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus is Lord. Sometimes I guess you can just dance yourself into a healing. Glory to God. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hey, listen, uh, Antoine and I uh, heard the Holy Spirit and decided to collaborate on our first book, Amen. Establishing Kingdom Faith. Now, you know, when I say that, I want y'all to understand that there are so many people that work to, put, to produce this. Uh, it's my ideas from God. This, this one combination of his and mine. But there are so many people, graphics, uh, uh, editors, uh, publishers, and people. And I say, all that's people. Come on, say, all that's people. Y'all ain't flowing with me here. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Say, all that is people. All that is people. So they work behind the scenes, feverishly. So the first hands that touch it is Lady France. She's a, she has a command for, for, for language, and so she cleans it up before it gets to anybody else so I don't get embarrassed. Amen? Amen. And I thank God for her skill set and her ability because it might, it might read like I talk. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. And then there's some, some really capable hands, and, and Marcel is, is a second hands on it, and, and y'all know he's just uh, methodical. He, he's searching for stuff. And that's okay. That's okay. I, I mean, that's, that's why he gets it. Amen? Hey, y'all with me? Amen, amen, amen. I'm thinking about including Minister Miles in it to make sure it's ecclesiastically sound. You know, sometimes you think it's ecclesiastical sound, amen? But he's our anointed ecclesiastical officer. Praise God. But, but so there's a, there's a slew of people that work with us to, to, for every production. And so when you see that, Daria has a unique connection with graphic uh, art, and, uh, and the guy produces this stuff at a kingdom price for us. 
Say a kingdom price. People look at our stuff and they say, man, who did that? And I said, the team. Together, everyone's assignment is made easier. So, so they're available in the bookstore. If you want to get a copy of that, you can. Praise God. Say amen. amen. The conference was an overwhelming success. <laughs> Bishop told me that, he said, this is, this is top level because nobody does this for the pastor. We do, it, we do it for the bishop, the apostle, but, but nobody does this for the pastor. So, so this was a first. But we're apostolic, right? Amen, amen. And so it was, it was, uh, it was well done and well placed. Uh, Daria put a lot of work into this. The committee worked diligently with Daria. <laughs> Buildings and grounds worked tremendously. Yeah. I got texts back from all of our guests saying, oh my goodness, your staff was amazing. They took care of me. One guy just put it all out there. They fed us every night, he said. <laughs> Amen. I, I almost kind of felt like Solomon when he did that. Our cupbearers. Praise God. Are y'all hearing me? See, this is top-notch, kingdom-level experience. You know, we told y'all this was coming. We told you it was coming. Amen. One of the brothers said, what do you need for the sanctuary? I'm, 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 I'm in it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother texted me and said, whatever you need, let me know. Bishop said, let's do the conference again next year, and we're going to keep it in Flint. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we got to get on the other side, so... I said, we got to get on the other side. Amen. Praise God. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day, dads. Man, what would the world be without a good father? Amen. We're chip off the old block, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but let's, get, let's get the mic so, we, so you, can, you can get this. Uh, this, it ain't on. It ain't on. You want me to turn you on or the mic on? The mic, the mic, the mic, the mic, the mic, the mic, the mic. The mic, the mic. Somebody else should turn the mic on. Everything would have been fine. I would just like for all of us to give the entire team that had anything to yes. do with this topic. They deserve it. They were Let's give them a standing on. Come on, y'all. Let's stand up. Thank God. Hallelujah. Lord. Which is so awesome. And I just thank God, one of our newest members, John, raise your hand, John. He created something that was so yeah. awesome. Yeah. He created something to put the swords in. Yes. I, mean, I wish you guys could see it. It was amazing. So we just want to think we can go get it. Yeah, go get it. Go get it real quick and bring it out here. We need to see it. Yeah, go get and that. We just want we just want everybody to know that we appreciate God wants you to know Lord. that He appreciates everything, every minute, every second. You still Lord. up here doing something, doing anything. If you just pray for the conference, He appreciates that. Yes. And we just want you to know that we appreciate all of you. you know, I'm kissing all of you. <laughs> Amen. So hey Amen. That, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. And we, it is. we, oh we my would. God. Oh yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. This man is so gifted. He is so gifted. God bless you. John, bless John you. is so humble. He, he's really I embarrassed by this. Yeah, he, he's embarrassed. He don't want, he want to give God all the credit. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
But can I say this? You should have seen that steel before he put his hands on it. Amen. So, so let's thank God for what he did. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Uh, Sister Peachy, where Peachy at? She just got called. She, she's still working. People talk about, the, who, but with all the people that, that and I just want to say this because everybody was talking about the food. And so we just got to let you know. Thank you, Jesus. If you cooked a string bean, if you made some dressing, if you did whatever you did, and if you work with the team, Team Peachy, and putting all that together, would you stand right now? Because I want to thank you on behalf of all them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you all so much. And Brother James Payne wants the recipe for the string beans. If it ain't a secret. He, sa he said, now you all taught him how to cook uh, turnip greens. He said, I think I can cook them like a black woman now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, I guess I know what that means. <laughs> Amen. Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. Now let's give God and Jesus some praise for the conference. Yay! Yes! Hallelujah! Come on, let's exalt her! Glory, 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 glory! Woo! We don't want to give nobody more praise than we give God. Without him, it wasn't possible. Amen? Couldn't be done. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. So I, in the strength of that, I was thinking, and the Holy Spirit, I, had, I told you I had these dreams that were so prolific. I'm, I mean, it's like I was there, and people were getting saved. They were crying and, and saying that. And I said, well, okay, Lord, this is good, but it's Father's Day. You know, usually I have a Father's Day message. And the Holy Spirit said, well, who do you think I'm talking about? I said, oh, I'm talking about your father. So I want you to tell the church today that I'm their father. And you're not going through anything by yourself. I've been talking to some members that have been missing, and uh, I'm finding some wonderful things. It's just some little things that need to be fixed for them. Some little things. And uh, one of them said to me, Pastor, I miss those outlines. I can follow you with those outlines. I said, okay. Is that, that it? She said, yes. I said, well, come on back. Uh, in fact, let me send you about 10 outlines. <laughs> she said, you'll do that? I said, yes. Praise God. I want you to get caught up. So Tomiko has the outlines today. Now, y'all know we used to print them. Every week we printed them, in, and I, I kept finding them on the floor. I'm not, listen, I'm not talking about you. I love you. I love you. You just forgot. You, you forgot it. You forgot to stick it in your Bible. And then it, it, the wind blew it off the seat. That's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. Praise God. And so I know you, I know you appreciate it. And so we, so we went to soft copies. Amen? And Tamiko would send them out every week so that you would be abreast of, as to what was happening. So uh, she has the outline today, and uh, if, you, if you would like a desire, it, and I told the lady, if you, if you desire it, just reach out to the office, and, and Tamiko will make sure you get a copy of it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Or would you, uh, let me see the hands of those of you who would like to receive a copy of the outline at every message. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that's okay, though. That's okay. That's okay. I ain't mad at you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you, how many of you know you can't please everybody? Amen. You just got to do what God told you to do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So if you want a copy of the outline, uh, Tamiko will have them. They're available in the office. Amen. Amen. Not, not soft, hard copies, soft copies. So you got to download it. Amen. But she'll make sure you get it. The kingdom church experiencing kingdom triumph. Say the kingdom church experiencing kingdom triumph. 
warning, what you're about to hear will be hazardous to your carnality. The eternal high council has determined that continued exposure to these truths will create in you a kingdom nature and destroy the self-life. You know what the Holy Spirit said? He said, you need to tell the complete truth about this shoe. I just, I just heard that. Because, yeah, you know, sometimes people get misled. Y'all with me? This is a very expensive shoe. If I took it off and let you feel it, you, you, you would want to uh, take them from me. <laughs> you would you want to take them. But they feel like a little glove. Amen? So it's like almost like I don't have on a shoe. My, my toe is grateful. Amen? Amen. Now, now, let me say this. It was a gift. It was a gift. It was a gift, y'all. The, the, the owner of the store sold almost the entire thing. Listen, this, this is ostrich skin shoe. So those of you who buy, y'all know. Amen. And, and who? Thank you, Jesus, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Fran chose, chose gray today, and so it, 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 I could wear this shoe. The other ones ain't as friendly, uh, Elder Reggie. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I just, you know, just, just so you know that uh, healing is a process unless a miracle takes place. I said healing is a process unless a miracle takes place. Amen. And sometimes we, we walk and stuff and we get people to the wrong idea and they start doing stuff and, and they get jacked up because uh, you didn't tell them the whole truth. Amen. Say soft shoes. Okay. Praise God. In John chapter 10 verse 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all. Say my father. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. And then I, I was chewing on that, and that's where those little verses came from in that song. I was just thinking, God is capable of keeping you, protecting you, loving you, and holding on to you. You have security with him like you ain't got nowhere else on the planet. People argue about eternal security, and I tell them, I don't. I am eternally secure. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay with him until he comes to get me. Amen. I have no desire to be anyplace else. And that's just security for me. Now, whatever your definition is, I, 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 I'm trying to hear it. I ain't going nowhere. Praise God. John chapter 14, verse 28. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice. Mm. If you love me, you will rejoice. So in praise service, what I'm discovering is people that really love God and then people that just like him. You know what I'm saying? That's the people that love God and then the people just kind of like him. And I'm not mad at you. I'm not God, so I'm not judging you. I'm just, if you just like him, it's okay. You just sit there and praise him. But then you see some people that love him. They'll get up and go, whoa, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They'll disturb somebody next to them. Woo! <laughs> what's, what's wrong with them? They love him. I said they love him. They love their father. Now, now you, you might say, well, Pastor, you can't put that on me because I ain't doing that. I don't love God. I, that ain't, I ain't, I'm trying to, I, listen, I'm not trying to bet that. All I got is scripture. All I got is scripture. Don't take me. I'm not attacking you. You can sit in silence and suffer in silence if you want to. It's up to you. The scripture said there's something connected to the lovers of God, an appreciation of him, an adoration of him, a devotion connected to him that won't, won't transfer to anybody else. He said, you love me. If you love me, you will rejoice. 
I mean, you know, some of us are extrovert. I get it. Some of us are shy. I'm not trying to pull you into me. I'm just saying, he said, if you love me, you will rejoice. Now, if that's a problem, please don't take it up with me. I'm just reading your Bible. It don't take all that. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't trying to. Look, I don't know. I just know. Can I read it one more time so you know I didn't make this? Y'all don't mind if I read it one more time? You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice. I'm just saying, because I said, I go to my father, for my father is greater than I. He said, the reason that you're rejoicing is because I'm going to daddy, and he's greater than I am. He said, look, if you think I'm hot stuff, wait till you see him. He said, y'all think, I'm, y'all think I got it going? Wait. You, 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 you marvel because I'm walking on water? Let me talk. Let, let's go to the one who created the water. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Jesus said, make no mistake about it. I'm here to represent him. Only reason I'm doing the stuff on the earth is because I want you to know he owns it. He owns it. The only reason I'm, I'm feeding 5,000 men, not including women and children, with a handful of stuff is because I want you to see he owns it. And so we ought to say all glory to God. Can somebody say that all glory to God? Now, now listen to this. St. John 15. Jesus always puts stuff in his perspective since this is Father's Day, right? He said, now listen to me. I'm the true vine. Are you with me? There's no access to heaven but through me. I'm the true vine. But don't get stuck on me being the true vine. My father is the husband man. (laughs) My father is the vine dresser. My father prunes the vine. My father produces through this vine. My father looks for people that are producing so he can get more out of them. My father graces people to produce. My father works with people to produce. You you know, I'm the vine, but there's somebody greater than me. That ain't taking nothing away from Jesus. Come on, that's not taking anything away from him. In in fact, I believe, I believe as I'm reading this, the only reason Jesus is saying this is for our benefit. Because him and God and the Holy Ghost are not ego tripping at all. They all know who they are and there's tremendous respect. There's such unity in their Godhead, we can't even figure it out. Are you with me? But Jesus wants us to understand that he sees what we can't see. I'm going to hell for you, Jesus said. Listen to me. I'm going to hell for you. But my father is going to raise me up. You know, Jesus said, look, I'm going to hell because my daddy can control the situation. He, the, he, he already told me through the prophet that he won't leave me in hell. Neither will he suffer me to have corruption. So I can go in the hell for a heavenly cause. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to get this in a moment. Can can we talk about our daddy? You ain't going to mind, Father, if we don't talk about you today. Can we talk about our daddy? Is that all right? Yeah, praise the Lord. You know your wife's going to love on you, lady. Your children got surprises for you. It's all right. You you, you ain't going to be ignored. You ain't going to be ignored. The wife's going to kiss you. Children going to sit on your lap if they three. You know, if they're older, they're going to hug you. They got a card for you. Amen. Amen. They're they going to recognize you. Hey, all the fathers stand. Everybody that's a father in the house stand. Let's make it official so y'all don't feel like we slighting y'all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. God bless y'all. Uh, y'all do realize ain't no people on the planet without y'all, right? Okay.
Okay, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Praise God. Two women ain't, ain't figured out how to have no baby yet. Y'all was talking, y'all didn't hear me. Two women ain't pulled this off yet. Now somebody trying to preach my message. It ain't Mother's Day, it's Father's Day. Stay out my message, stay out my message. Praise God. I love you, but stay out my message. Yo, nobody wasn't helping Fran on Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> simmer down, simmer down. But you're right, two men ain't having no baby either. I don't care what you saw on Facebook. That was not a man. That was a woman trying to play like she a man. Men don't have wounds. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. See, you pulled me into that. Praise God. I was going to leave all that stuff alone. I am the true vine, my father is the husband, man. Now, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9, listen, listen to this. This is, this is great. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our father. Wait a minute, he's greater than? I'm going to hell, he going to raise me up? Are y'all with me? I walk on water, he made it. Are you with me? Now, he says the most astounding thing right here. You have connection to him just like I do. He's our father. Maybe that ain't settling with you. Some of y'all didn't have a father. Let me qualify that. You had to have a father or you wouldn't be here. But your father didn't raise you. He didn't contribute to your development. For whatever reason, I don't know, it could be a lot of things. Amen? Amen? Amen. And, and some guys are male factors, and it's really a good thing they didn't contribute to your development. Y'all hearing me? So, just in case you grew up without a daddy, a father, Jesus said when you get into the kingdom, you get a father. You get a daddy. You get a protector, a provider, somebody that's going to love you. Are you with me? Long suffer with you, not judge you and condemn you, caress you and correct you because he loves you. Say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Every time I'm praying, in the morning, I'm thinking about his majesty. My devotion is swallowed up with my admiration for his divinity. He's awesome. He's divine. And I think when I'm praying in the morning, I get to talk to him. I get to have a communication. I get to enjoy. I get to fellowship with him. With everything he's got going, he's got his eye on Flint, Michigan, flushing. 20, whatever that address is. You know, because there's a lot of folks out there, you know, I'm going to tell you where I live. Praise God. And, and um, I'm, I'm there in my house, in my pajamas, hair uncombed, teeth unbrushed, face unwashed. And it doesn't bother him. He embraces me. He loves on me. He's not like Fran. I got to brush my teeth. Y'all going to look at me real deep like, yeah, you know, I'm, comb your hair. Get a shower. Are you with me? But God doesn't make that demand. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm telling you. He, he, he is so glad that you considered devotion with him before you leave this house, he will receive you just like you are. Woo! Daddy wants to love on you. Quit running from him. Hallelujah. Is this helping you at all? I'm going real slow. 
I got a bunch of notes here, uh, but we're just going to keep moving. Praise God. I'm going to quit when I need to stop. After this manner, therefore pray, ye our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Luke chapter 11, verse 2. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father. So, so all of your prayer ought to include our Father. In some form and way in that prayer, you need to acknowledge God. If you want to call him Jireh, if you want to call him Rapha, if you want to call him Jehovah, you with me? If you want to call him Adonai, El Shaddai, El Elyon, whatever it is you want, acknowledge him. Don't enter into his presence without acknowledging him. I, I, I think the, the acknowledgement of God with his name is like in the military, when you walk up on an officer that's higher in you in rank, you salute them. What are you doing? You're recognizing their rank. So if you go to God and you don't acknowledge his name, you ain't recognizing his rank. You ain't talking to Gabriel. In fact, Jesus put it this way, don't even talk to me. In that day, ask me nothing, but whatever you ask the Father in my name, in my name, I'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. Amen. Because he recognizes the sacrifice I made to get you entrance into his presence. And he's not going to disrespect anything that I've done to get you there. I don't care what you did on the earth. If you just come in my name, you got access to your Father. And he can take care of whatever dumb thing you did to pull you out of his presence. Just say, in the name of Jesus. Can you shout that? Woo! That's instant access. Say, instant access. He said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in, as in heaven so in earth. Say, as in heaven, so in earth. So it, it, it seems to me that if we're going to celebrate the Father on Father's Day, we need to do what he wants done in the planet. The highest honor you can give to your father is obedience. Submission. Faithfulness. God is looking for that more than he is your offering. Hallelujah. I didn't say he wasn't looking for y'all for now. Get it twisted. You look at money, God calls it an offering. Are you with me? An offering is an indication of obedience and submission. If you ain't there, you're just giving money. Did you hear that? So let, let, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 19, verse 23. I want you to see this, this contrast here. Israel is in Babylon. Say they're in Babylon. And every time they went into Babylon or any other country, they were there because they were disobedient to the Father. They desecrated the temple. They ignored the prophets. They, they, they gave no recognition to the Sabbaths. There was nothing sacred or sacerdotal in their minds at all. They just, they got so big, they, 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 they almost acted like they didn't need God. And when you get to that place in your life where you think you're bigger than God, the devil has got you, and he's got access to you. Because he, you know what he recognizes? He recognizes that same spirit because that's the one that got him out of heaven. And he's waiting on you to behave like that so he can keep you from getting there. Are you hearing? So Israel find themselves now incarcerated in Babylon, trapped. Behold, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 19. The voice of the cry of the daughter of my people. Because of them that dwell in a far country. Say a far country. Obviously, everybody wasn't trapped into Babylon. There were some people that must have been scattered abroad, but they were thinking about those that were in captivity. Are you hearing me? Because of my, my, my people, the daughter of my people, that are trapped because of their disobedience. Say trapped. Because of their disobedience. Because of them that dwell in a far country. And here's what they're saying. Is not the Lord in Zion? 
Zion is the city of David. It's the city where God is. Is there not a God? Is there not the Lord, not a God, the Lord in Zion? In, in other words, people began to look at the di disobedience of a nation who says that they're godly and watch the decimation and the devastation and the degradation and they say, is there not a God in Washington? Is there not a Lord in Michigan's state capital, Alaska, California? Is there not a Lord? Now, now this is going to really mess you up. Is there not a Lord in the churches? How in the world did they get into this captivity? Where is God? Where is the Lord of Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me the anger with their graven images and with their strange vanities? This graven image, strange vanity, is a, is a unique thing because as they were in idolatry and flirting with darkness, they walked away from devotion to God. When it says their strange vanities, what they're talking about is the nations that they begin to duplicate in their worship. They brought that stuff to the house of God. They desecrated the temple. Strange fire is what the Bible calls it. Offering up this stuff to God as if somehow he's going to wink at your ignorance. Are you hearing me? And so then the people that are looking on and the people who refuse to come to church because it's a placebo church or a hybrid church, it ain't what it used to be, they're looking at that assembly over there, that meeting, and they're going, where is the Lord in kingdom? Are you hearing? But we thank God that that won't be said about us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, that, don't, don't get it twisted. That don't mean we're a bunch of, in, uh, you know, perfect people. <laughs> How many of you know you ain't perfect? Yeah. I, I just checking, you know. Because we talk to people sometimes like we're perfect. If they get in error. We become judge, jury, and executioner. With our flawed thinking and flawed behavior, we, we want to get somebody straight. While we look like this, you know, we straighten up, you buzzer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, anybody hearing this at all? So, 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 now, 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 and see, don't read anything into that that I'm not saying. Now, we do have a responsibility to help people stay on the straight and narrow. Not beat them there. Love them back into that place. Amen? Is anybody hearing this at all? Because uh, if you don't, judgment will begin at the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we get a bunch of folks that, we, oh, well, you know, we don't want to judge you, uh, uh, but you a man and you got a, a man, you call him your wife, and you want to be the, 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 the head usher. No, we got to talk. I said, we got to talk. I, I thank God for your desire, your, your zeal. Can we correct one thing in your life so, uh, so heaven won't lift off of us like a bird off a limb while you're serving? Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I heard you. That ain't the only thing that you can do that heaven will lift off. How many of you know heaven will lift off a church that's full of liars? Amen. Scoffers. Amen. Mean folks. Amen. Yeah, so, so let's just get them all in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with their strange vanities? Now, here, here verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. Oh 
Man, this thing grabbed me when I read it. I said, oh, my God. We, we got right through the harvest. The summer was over. And we didn't go in the fields. And now guess what? We're not saved. Now, that doesn't mean we ain't going to heaven. You understand what I'm saying? Let's put it in context. Because we didn't obey God, the resources that he would have had for us in the winter won't be here. Because we didn't do the harvest. We're going to go through a huge spiritual inflation because we ignored the harvest. Are you hearing? Now, some of us are going to go through heaven, go to heaven, in the midst of not ignoring the harvest, uh, <laughs> because the devil got us. Now, usually when you say that, people, it registers to them, the devil got us, so we inhale. No. Paul said, here's what I want you to do to this brother that won't change. And, and, and when he do, uh, he, he keeps going back. He said, I prayed for God, to God for you, that your body can be buffeted so your soul won't be lost. Now, that's, a, that's some heavy reverie right there, and I don't have time to really deal with it. I don't even know why I quoted that scripture. But there, there are some problems in the, in the assembly that because they're of such a nature, people won't repent. Problems are going to have to beat it off of them. It ain't God. Are you with me? Because you ignored the harvest, I have no resources for you. Hallelujah. The Bible said even the king is served by the field. The king. Are y'all getting this? Y'all looking at me like, what in the world is he talking about? Praise God. The part of our devotion to God is assembling. And darkness has con convinced many of us. Can I talk to y'all for a moment? Y'all streaming, I love you. I love you. Praise God. You, you guys are some really great, con uh, con you know, offering givers too. Praise God. So, and some of you are in other states. Tennessee, Virginia, other, but in Oklahoma. You, you're in different places. And so I thank God for you. I thank God for you. The stream and the social media platform is a serious benefit to you. And I thank you. There's no way in the world you can physically be here unless you got on a plane uh, yesterday and got here for service today and you're going back tomorrow. Now, there are some of you that could do that and it wouldn't affect your income. But most of you that are in that position, you can't do that. So we thank God for you. Come on, y'all. Let's thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, can I talk to you wonderful people? that are here in Genesee County that are hearing this word streaming every week and you don't believe that you ought to be present your devotion is in check with heaven now because the Bible said not forsaking the assembling yourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another so much more as you see that they're approaching your presence is required not by me heaven. I love you. I do. I do. But you know COVID ain't got you at home now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I love you. I love you. I, no criticism. Please hear my heart. We need you. The harvest is plenteous. Let's make the labors too. Amen. Verse 21, for the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. Can, the three words, I am black. Can I take a moment and talk about that? Black is usually associated with deterioration less than or minor. Are you with me? That's not what he means here when he talks about black from that standpoint. What he's saying is, darkness has enveloped us. Darkness, darkness. In other words, I am 
in a place where my loins is yearning for your freedom and your deliverance. And that could, by definition, according to this context, be a black moment. Now, that doesn't mean that because that, by definition, that's a black moment, everything black is like that. If you're an accountant, and you're, you're where's, where's Gail? Yeah. If you're an accountant, and you're Sam, and you're figuring out income and taxes, when people are in the red, that ain't good. But if you're in the black, <laughs> so we have to we have to we have to mirror some monster word on the basis of the connotation and the denotation, how it's used in the, in the se- sentence, what the original definition is, and how it's applied. When he says I'm black, he ain't saying all black people are messed up. That's not what he's saying. He says I'm in a state right now that, that, that is dark. I th- and, and reason I'm in that state, I'm not, because this is God talking, I'm not there. What I'm seeing is you are in darkness. And I'm grieved for that. I, I'm, my, my loins, are, I, I'm suffering pains now because I want you to get out of that. Are you with me? For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold upon me. Now, you got to understand, God ain't grieved to the point like we are. You know, when somebody dies in our family, we love, we go into grief, and sometimes we stay there for years. When, when the Holy Spirit is grieved with man on the planet, it is not a remorseful state of melancholy where he's liable to slip into deep depression, uh, bipolar. It, 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 he doesn't mean that. You, you follow what I'm saying? If I can put it in context for you, what he's saying here is, I don't, I, I'm astonished with what you know about God and how you're behaving. That's what he's saying. How in the world can you know God on this level and act like this? And then blame me for it. I, I'm, I'm talking about our father. This is Father's Day, right? Y'all with me? Stay with me, y'all. Come on, this is good news. This is good news. Verse 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no, no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? This is Old Testament. Say Old Testament. So it's, a, it's a condition that occurred because there was no high priest that was perfect who felt the infirmities of the people and could deliver them from them. Every high priest that went into that temple before Jesus had to purify himself. Jesus is the only high priest that was pure and perfect to take care of the disobedience of the people. So lock that in your mind when we look at this verse now. Hold that thought in your head while we see, is there no balm in Gilead? What he's saying is, balm is medicine. Is there no medicine for the suffering of the people? Is there no prescription? How many of y'all know Jesus was the prescription? And he is the prescription. So the church today will never be where Israel was. We will never have to be there because there is a balm in Gilead. That's good for the healing of the nations. There is a bomb in Gilead for America. There is a bomb in Gilead for the Ukraine. There's a bomb in Gilead for Soviet China, Russia. There's a bomb in Gilead for Red China. There's a bomb in Gilead for the neighborhood. There's a bomb in Gilead for the inner city, the suburbs. There's a bomb in Gilead for you. There is medicine to your soul. The Word of God is medicine. Health to your navel. Marrow to your bones. If I can get you to start eating on this Word, whatever's been eating on you will stop. 
We don't need to sing this song like, like they're singing it now. Woe is me. I don't know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. I trust my God. I'll stand on the authority of his word. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm not like Israel. I've been delivered, my God, from darkness, from blackness, from lack, slack, poverty. <laughs> my father is greater than this. My father is greater than this. God wants to solve your cases. He wants to solve the suits that you have. He wants to heal the diagnosis the doctor gave you. God wants to raise you up. You are not born to live in that condition. God wants to put money in your bank. He wants... <laughs> so if we're going to really worship our daddy, we need to get up out of this stupor, out of this poverty, out of this lack, out of this self-abasement, victim mentality. We need to stand in the presence of a God who's never lost a battle and raise our hand and say, our God lives. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not going to be bound by anything. You cannot control me. You cannot manipulate me. You cannot threaten me. You cannot beat me down. God has built me up and I ain't letting you tear me down. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say glory to, glory to God. Get on your feet. Come on, say glory to God. Get to your feet. It's time to exalt the king of glory. Come on, clap those hands. Clap those hands. from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. Woo! Hallelujah! We! Yes, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We worship you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you, while you're standing there, can you just bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Hallelujah. We don't ever want to pass up an opportunity for somebody to come to Christ, to, to receive him in their heart. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you have received him at one point and you walked away from him, we want to provide an opportunity right now. God wants to provide an opportunity for you to come back home. Amen? So you can call him Father, and he can be the Father he needs to be for you. If you're watching with us on the stream, itk2.com or Facebook, I just want you to repeat this after me. Father God, forgive me of my sins. I repent. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead for the remission of my sins. Thank you, Father, for giving me this opportunity 
to come home. In Jesus' name, amen. Now just give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say amen for Minister Miles. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Wow. Ushers are in the aisles to serve you at this time. Please raise your hand for an offering envelope. Listen, Doc, Bishop Payne really blessed us over this week. If you were here, amen. I'm sure, sure you were blessed. Glory to God. Now, if you're visiting with us via stream, and, and since you are, we want to give you an opportunity to participate in service at this level as well. Uh, you can go to itk2.com, click on the give link and follow the instructions there. You can also give through Givelify if you have, if you don't have it on your phone or tablet. So simply go to the Google Play Store, Apple Store, download it. And um, when you type in Kingdom of Heaven Ministries, look for the look for the sword and shield logo and you'll be in the right spot. Amen. You can keep that on your phone. You can give electronically as we often do here at the Kingdom. Amen. And if you want to bless Dr. Brown specifically, you can do so through Cash App. That's a dollar sign LWB66, dollar sign LWB66. There's a special blessing for every level of giving, amen. Listen, Bishop shared uh, so many, many nuggets with us. Uh, one of the things that really stuck out to me when he shared on the seed was that the seed attracts everything it needs once it's placed in the ground. You realize the seed is attracting to it not just everything it needs, but everything you need because you sowed the seed. The seed has an attracting capability once you sow it into the ground that is going to pull together all the nutrients it needs for it to be successful. It, I, now I, thought, I, I started thinking about that. I said, man, that is amazing. One of the things that we have to be careful with, particularly, and this is the reason why you know, we ask to sow on different levels, is because your soil that you're sowing in has to recover. Farmers will let their fields not grow anything for a period of time so that the organic matter can start to reproduce itself again. You know what the other thing does, happens when that process occurs? You disrupt the pests that are in the so soil that are coming against your seed. You disrupt their cycle of life. And when you begin to disrupt it, it's kind of like disrupting the devil's cycle of life in your, once you, so you got to, at some time, you got to sow a pastoral seed. See, if you sow corn all the time, you're going to, you're going to just rake the soil of his nutrients, but you have to plant something else every now and again so that the soil can recover from, it, from that one nutrient being sucked away from it. So you wonder why we have many offerings. We want to let your soil be as fertile and as rich as it can possibly be so that it can, it can uh, attract everything to it that God wants to have to it. Amen? God has set that process up. He, the scripture that he shared, he said that, you know, we sleep and rise day and night and the seed springs forth. We don't know how. We, we ain't got nothing to do with it. We can go to bed, wake up every day. Next thing we know, we got something. We got some corn or some tomatoes or whatever. We ain't done nothing. Amen. But God has put this thing together in such a way that you all you got to do is just trust the process. So all you got to do is just trust the process. Sow the seed and trust the process. Amen. If you're ready with your seed to sow, you can stand at this time. That'll give me an indication that you're ready. Amen. Now, we are going to uh, have another uh, special offering, I believe, for Dr. Brown. Is that correct, Pastor Antoine? <laughs> he said, huh? <laughs> Glory to God. You know what's so unique about what took place uh, over this period of time? See, when, when you're called into an office, one thing that happens to you, there's a name change. J just like every person that's been called by God, when, Abra when Abram became Abraham, there was a name change. When something significant happens, there's a name change. When a woman gets married, there's a name change to signify how different this is going to be. 
and there was a name change, so you gotta get used to it. I think some, I told this one guy at the, at the thing, he said, he said, what's your name? Because he was trying to get my information. I said, I'm Minister Miles. He said, no, what's your first name? I said, I don't know. I've been calling myself Minister Miles for so long. <laughs> I figured it was my first name. <laughs> Amen. Either that or I'm Peachy's husband. One of the two. She's the only one call me Alan that, is, that I'm aware of. <laughs> Amen. If you're ready, you can stand to your feet. Get used to the name change. Glory to God. If you're ready, you can come at this time. You're in the hands of the ushers and you can bring your seat. Pray over it when you get it here because your, vo your voice activates the supernatural on your seed. Amen. Glory to God. And don't forget the house when you come, amen. Amen. The, um, the children are coming at this time, and they got something special that they want to present to Pastor at this time. If they can come, glory to God. Amen for Sister Venetia as she comes. She's going to facilitate this next portion of giving. Amen. 
Good afternoon. At this time, um, we'd like to appreciate our grace gift. You know, we are so very fortunate in this region to have a man that God has placed in our midst. And we call our grace gift, amen. He watches over our souls, amen. He is dedicated every day, every morning, every night to get into the presence of God to pray on our behalf, amen. To hear what the Spirit is saying for us, amen. And he gets up here with his heel and toe and all, amen. <laughs> and being obedient to the word of God on our behalf, amen. So at this time, we would like to appreciate our grace gift with a gift that is from your heart, amen. So if the ushers can pass out um, an envelope at this time, I know we've given a lot this week, but no greater gift, hallelujah, uh, should we bestow, um, come from my heart and be able to be bestowed upon our grace gift. This man is in God's presence on our behalf every single day. And so we just want to appreciate him. And you can do it through his cash app, yeah. hallelujah, or through Givelify, or write a check, amen. Tell him how much you appreciate him. When you get the chance, because we are truly blessed, and God is blessing him, and God is blessing this ministry, amen, to move beyond just Genesee County. Of course, we're streaming, right? We have the, um, the streamers are um, a part of us as well. You can give cash app, dollar sign LWB66, or... Um, Giving through our website as well, um, www.itk2.com, and through Givelify. We are going places because of the obedience of our grace gift. Amen. And you can see the blessing upon his life in results of what's happened to his son. Amen. He is now a pastor, and we appreciate that, and we're going to support him in that, amen, and other outreach centers of the kingdom, because that's a part of our vision, amen, and so we're going to see, God is going to bless us. If, if you had any opportunity uh, during the last three days to even listen to the prophecy and the word that was shared, God is not only going to bless Minister Antoine, but he's going to bless Kingdom of Heaven Ministries. Amen. We are expanding. We are expanding, and we're looking forward to it. We're up for the challenge because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? Amen. Okay, at this time, you want to bring up your gifts? Did you pass out the envelope? Yep, bring them to the altar. And then I'll put it in the hands of Minister Brown, Pastor Antoine Brown. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hey, uh, Deacon Larry, you want to pray over those?
Hallelujah. Amen. Let's let's uh I got one prayer request. We're gonna we're gonna pray over these gifts for Pastor first. Do the prayer requests. Amen. Tell you what, let me do the prayer request first. Amen. Because this is a, a dear sister of ours who has a request here at the altar of God. I want to ask that you continue to pray with her. Amen. And this is from Sister Jackie Anderson for her sister. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Saints, please pray in the spirit and just help out. Father, I thank you for Sister Jackie's uh, sister in the name of Jesus. And I speak healing into her body right now in Jesus' name. We do thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And when we bring a request to the altar of God, that we're placing the petition right before you. And we thank you that because we do and we pray in faith, we have the request uh, set for that petition to be answered. Send healing to her body. I pray in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for our speedy recovery. Everybody that's got anything to do with, with her uh, physical condition, from the surgeons, from anybody that's going to touch her, even anybody, somebody's going to put a Band-Aid on her, Father. Let them have health in Jesus' name and an anointing on them to provide provide the, the security of this seed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to pray over these gifts all together. Everybody can stand. We're about to be dismissed here shortly. Glory to God. Video Center is going to help us out. Okay. On the count of three, pray this with me. One, two, three. Father God, I thank you for being faithful and giving us seeds to sow, bread for our table, multiplying our seed sown, and increasing the fruit of our righteousness. Thank you for giving us the grace we need to have all sufficiency on all sides so that we can abound to every good work. We are sowers in the house of God, and because we are, we thank you for commanding men to give back to us good measure, press it down, shaken together, and running over with the same measure we meet is measured back to us again. Thank you also for extending your covenant of the tithe to us. You have opened the windows of heaven, poured out a blessing. There is not room enough to receive it all. Personally rebuke the devour for our sakes and cause our fields to be fruitful in their time. And as we give the pastor, according to Ezekiel 4430, a blessing rests in our house, and you daily load us with benefit so we can start the process over again. Amen. Amen. It's going to help us out with the Spirit of the Lord on us. Amen. As we leave this place on a count of three, one, two, three, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, each one reach one. God bless you. We'll see you this Wednesday.